Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Alertus webinar series. My name is Vincent Busher, Marketing Coordinator at Alertus Technologies. During this presentation today, Eric Murphy, Senior Regional Sales Manager, will discuss how the audible and visual alert beacon can instantly improve your facility notification coverage. In addition, we would like to thank Tim Pride Moore, Emergency Management Specialist from the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga for joining us today to give his insight on the impact of the alert beacon and the alert system on their campus. Now, feel free to submit your questions during the webinar anytime, and they will be addressed during the Q&A session at the end of this presentation. This webinar is being recorded and will be shared with you after today's session. If you have any questions after this presentation, please email marketing at alertus.com. Now I'd like to turn it over to Eric. Awesome, thanks, Vinny. Um, yeah, like Vinny was saying, uh, my name is Eric. I'm a senior regional account manager uh, here at Alertus. Um, Tim Pridemore I'm from the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga is also going to be joining us in a little bit. But today, um, we wanted to talk about one of our flagship products here at Alertus, which is our alert beacon. So I'm going to get into that, um, obviously, uh, a little bit later. But first, I just wanted to give you all a brief overview of Alertus in case this is your first time or your first exposure to the company, um, followed by some of the typical challenges that we see uh, when we work with organizations, schools, you know, you name it as far as emergency notification goes. Uh, then we're going to talk about this idea of unified mass notification, how it works and how you can build layers uh, into your emergency notification solution. Um, then we're going to dive into the alert beacon. I actually am in my live demo room here. So towards the end, I'm going to open up uh, my webcam and actually show you what these alert beacons look and sound like when everything's activated. Like Vinny was saying, if you do have questions, type them into the box and uh, we will uh, do our best to answer them at the end of the call here. So first things first, uh, about Alertus technology. So we are what you call a facility-based notification solution. So what that means is that we're gonna focus on notifying the space around an individual instead of their individual uh, smartphones or emails to capture their attention and to deliver uh, an emergency notification. So we kind of take a different approach at it, uh, but you know we, we do work hand in hand with some of those personal notification vendors um, so that at the end of the day, your organization can really have uh, kind of that that all-encompassing streamlined emergency notification approach. So we've been around uh, for quite some time now. Uh, since 2002, we were actually formed in the University of Maryland, and uh, we serve all different sectors from government offices right here in Washington, D.C., uh, to schools, companies all throughout the world, as well as many factory environments. So I talk with a lot of organizations about their emergency notification, and I talk with a lot of them about the challenges that they have with emergency notification. So I just kind of outlined uh, some of the bigger ones that I see. Uh, a lot of people struggle with having multiple locations, whether it's throughout the state, throughout the county, you know, throughout the whole country, even the world, in actually segmenting emergency alerts to those specific areas. Um, that that is a really big challenge because you don't want to you know, send a message to Philadelphia uh, when you're all the way in San Francisco. So it's really important to kind of have a system that could do that. Um, multiple systems to activate. You know, if you have all of these different emergency alert systems, great. But if they're all different points of activation, that's just going to cost you time. And, you know, I'm sure we all know in the event of a real emergency, time's not something you have a lot of. So it's really important to be able to get that notification out quickly and efficiently um, to all of those different notification assets that you might have. No way of notifying all the locations that you do have, whether it's at each facility or whether it's just in one building. Uh, that's a very, very big problem. Um, a lot of people are also a problem. You know, you might have people who might not be a part of a text messaging or an email solution. And it's really important to be able to reach um, all of those people, whether they're employees, visitors, students, staff, you know, you name it. Um, if they are on your facility, you know, ultimately it's your responsibility uh, to send them a notification if something were to happen. People moving between locations is also big, um, and that also kind of fits in with my first bullet. You have to be able to get the information to, to you know, where it is pertinent to the person. Uh, and if, you know, I'm at the San Francisco office, something happens in Philadelphia, I don't want to get that message necessarily um, let, letting me know until, you know, maybe a little bit later when I'm going back there. Cell phones not allowed uh, in classrooms, uh, R&D labs. It's, it's very, very common, uh, and that ultimately distracts from our ability to get a text message out. So that's where kind of facility-based notification comes into play. And then lastly, minimal to no visual alerting endpoints. There's not a whole lot of uh, systems to kind of capture attention visually. 
to let you know something's happening. Um, so it's really important to kind of have something in there. So as far as some of the best emergency notification solutions that I've seen, uh, both from the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga and also some from some of the other uh, customers that I have, uh, a lot of them incorporate this idea of layering into their emergency notification. So what this is going to allow you to do is kind of create redundancy with your emergency notification so that if for whatever reason, one of your points of notification were to fail, let's say the cell phone towers are down, you can't send it a, a text message out, you can kind of supplement that with different forms of notification. You know, if all systems are working, that person's going to get three, four, five different methods of that notification saying the same thing. So they're going to take that, that message a lot more seriously than if they were to just get that one. So this encompasses um, layer one, which is indoor notification. Obviously, notifying the space indoors uh, so that people can you know, get that message. That's where the alert beacon comes in, which we'll be talking about today. Outdoor, obviously, notifying the space outdoors, um, which some of the high-powered speaker array solutions that we offer um, do you know, check that box. Personal notification, so that's where we have computer pop-ups, emails, text messaging, um, that type of stuff, and then public notification. So this is how you're getting a notification out to the areas that might not necessarily be within your immediate facility. Here we're talking about um, social networks, radio, TV broadcasting, that type of stuff. So like I said, some of the best emergency notification solutions that I see incorporate at least two of these. Um, it's recommended that you incorporate all four, um, but again, it, it, adding at least two layers to that emergency notification is very, very crucial as far as you know, delivering messages to people. So that brings us to what makes Alertus different. Uh, we really focus on taking all of the different aspects of emergency notification that you have and really kind of tying them together to create a single point of activation. So I always like to say that Alertus is kind of like the glue that holds together your emergency communication process because from that single point of activation, we're integrated. So you're going to be able to notify not just your Alertus endpoints, but also send a message to, you know, third party systems. Lock down access control doors, um, you know, uh, send messages to your SMS provider, that type of stuff. And then at the end of the day, once we integrate with everything, we're going to help you fill in some of the gaps with some of our proprietary solutions. So that's actually segueing perfectly into uh, the alert beacon, because that is how we help you fill in some of the gaps. So by itself, the alert beacon is a really effective way of retrofitting buildings or existing areas with emergency notification that might not have it. Typically, we see these in prominent locations throughout the building, lobbies, hallways, um, gymnasiums, a lot of science labs in universities and also like R&D labs have these as well. Um, a really great way to kind of capture that attention at the same time, delivering that, that intelligent message as far as what's actually happening. So to actually capture attention, uh, it flashes bright LED lights, there's eight of them, and it makes a loud tone, which is gonna go up to 106 decibels. So in the average work environment, the average school environment, 106 decibels is definitely enough to capture your attention uh, and to cut through any background noise that you might have. So once this alert beacon captures my attention, all I have to do is walk up and read the, the, the screen there, and I'm going to get this notification. So it doesn't matter if I you know, work at the company. It doesn't matter if I'm a visitor. Maybe I'm an interview just sitting in uh, you know, a conference room. I'm going to get the same notification regardless because this is going to be wall mounted again in those prominent uh, those prominent areas throughout your facility. So as far as uh, again some of the key features, this is a very reliable emergency notification solution. One of the great things about the Alertus system is that it's going to run internally on your network. So we don't necessarily need outbound internet connection. We don't you know need cell phone towers to be up. This is all going to run uh, within your organization. So that makes it very reliable and also very immediate. The entire time from you know, pressing the button to send the notification out to actually the alert beacons going off is average of 15 to 20 seconds. So that's pretty much instantaneous. I mean, that's throughout your whole facility. So if you have you know, a facility a couple hundred acres wide, that's 15, 20 seconds to let that whole campus know that something's happening. Um, also, uh, very affordable, you know, it's, it's approximately uh, one ninth of the cost of some of your other alert tone systems. So you can really get a lot of bang for your buck as far as you know spreading these alert beacons out across your facility. Um, you can also 
kind of tie this in with other systems that you have. So Alertis uh, can broadcast cat feeds, it can accept cat feeds. So if you have a system that is using a cat feed, which is a pretty standard alerting protocol for emergency communication systems, we can actually activate that or vice versa, that can activate us. Also, any, any solution that has developed to our API, we do have an open API, uh, can be either notified from Alertus or Alertus can actually ingest that message as well. Um, also, I'll talk about this a little bit later, but we can actually integrate this into some other technologies that we have to help you kind of expand that, uh, that emergency broadcast a little bit. And also, the whole Alertus solution is zonable. So if you want to zone each one of your buildings into a different group, if you want to zone it by geographical area or even just by uh, by device number on alert beacons, you can do that. You can get really granular with actually what alert beacon you want to activate it and where you want to activate it on that. So this also falls in uh, in a coordination with a lot of codes. Um, we're actually in the NFPA 72 handbook. Um, right next to the section where it's stating that where all the notification is provided, uh, mass notification system shall also provide a visual information to serve the hearing impaired and for high noise areas. So this is really important because, uh, you know, you can't re necessarily rely on that, that audible notification, you know, because if you do have people who might be hard of hearing or if you are in just a noisy environment, you might not hear that. So the flashing lights are really important as far as how to capture attention. Um, you know, if you don't fall into one of those categories, um, you're going to see the flashing lights and hear the tone, which just makes that a little bit uh, more effective as far as how you get that out. So um, both with ADA and with compliance with NFPA 72, um, the alert beacon is a great option as far as doing that. Specs, uh, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, uh, but just so you I get a feel for how big this is. Um, it's about seven inches by six inches, so a little bit smaller than like your standard piece of paper. Um, and again, these are wall mounted. Uh, as far as the strobes go, there are eight different flashing patterns on, on this. So you can really um, use a different flashing pattern for different flashing pattern for different alerts, or um, if you wanted to, you can kind of just you know customize this to the, the pattern that you like. Same thing goes with the sounders. Um, we have eight different tones on that, and th the noise on that can be configurable. Uh, but again, it goes up to 106 decibels maximum, and that's actually controlled on the Alertus console side. You don't have to go to each device uh, to, to configure that. As far as communication goes, um, we're very flexible as far as how this is actually communicating back with your Alertus server over your network. Power over Ethernet um, obviously is the standard. Uh, you know, we can fit in with any PoE solution um, or PoE network that you might have. So mount that on the wall, plug that Ethernet cable in, you're going to get both signal and power to that um, pretty instantaneously. Also, if you don't have a good PoE system, we do have Wi-Fi alert beacons as well. And, you know, if for whatever reason those won't work, uh, those won't work, we do have the FM radio version, so we can actually activate this through an FM radio signal. Um, these are also encrypted as far as their communication goes, which makes them very, very secure um, as far as, you know, installing on your network. So. As far as the alert beacons or communication goes, which makes them very, very secure um, as far as, you know, installing on your network. So as far as the alert beacon goes, by itself, it is a really powerful way of delivering emergency notifications. But it also acts as kind of the middleman or the brain between your alert solution and a lot of other peripheral devices. So that can either be an Alertus proprietary device, like our text-to-speech interface, which um, is takes pretty much the text that's on the alert beacon and converts it into speech that you and I are going to be able to understand. From that, it's either integrated into your existing PA system, or we do have our own line of speakers. Uh, the LED marquee uh, takes the text that's on the alert beacon and converts it um, into larger text uh, so that you can display it uh, in areas where you might have a lot of people or high traffic areas. like. Uh, busy hallways, gymnasiums, factory floors, that type of stuff. But the alert beacon can also control third-party systems to kind of give you that, uh, you know, that full integrated solution. So typically we see that the contact closures on the back of the alert beacon are activating signaling strobes or activating access control solutions. So the access control solution is a really great way of kind of combining the physical security aspect of your organization with your emergency notifications. 
So what we can do, um, typically access control systems have contact closures within them. So what a lot of people choose to do is actually leverage the lockdown alert in Alertus to actually lock down all the doors in a specific building. So that way, you know, one, you can ensure that people are notified that they need to lock down, but two, you can lock down that door immediately. So that way, you know, no one can come in um, at the same time you're letting everyone know. So again, going back to single point of activation, we're not just talking about notification assets here. We're also talking about, you know, physical security with things like access control. Um, pretty much any solution that does have a contact closure on it can be integrated in with that. So if you do have a question on that, let your alerted sales rep know and they'll be able to uh, kind of walk you through that process and uh, of that with you. So. As far as those ports I was just talking about, I'm not gonna to spend too much time on this, uh, but essentially there are two main ports on the back that will communicate with other solutions. The RS-232 port, uh, which delivers information to the, uh, the text-to-speech interface as well as the LED marquee, and the dry contact closure, the contact closure, uh, that will integrate in with things like those access control systems and those strobes. And, uh, and then again, you just have uh, your power over Ethernet connection. You have a Wi-Fi antenna back there. Um, they are There are a few backup batteries on this, and this system will actually recharge those batteries when it's powered on. So if you do lose power, uh, and you, let's say you have the Wi-Fi alert beacons, you can still get information to that, and it'll still be on for up to eight hours. And then when the power kicks back on, the, the alert beacon will actually recharge itself on that. So now I want to turn it over uh, to somebody I've been working with for quite a few years now. Um, he's, he's a really great Alertus customer and he's really knowledgeable in the system. Um, so Tim, uh, whenever you're ready, feel free to, to take it away. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Tim Prodmore, University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. And we would like to say welcome to the scenic city here. It's a beautiful afternoon in Chattanooga. As uh, Eric says, we have been working with Alertus uh, for a number of years, and to put that in perspective, we had actually selected a vendor and uh, were in the process of uh, the purchase process for a very similar device when we actually received a cold call sales uh, call from Alertus, and uh, the folks stopped by. And about halfway through their presentation, I just stopped them and called my boss and said, you need to come and see this because we're about to change vendors. The difference between what Alertus was offering us and what we had looked at up to that point was uh, literally the difference between night and day. So the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, who we are, we are uh, located in downtown Chattanooga, a city of about 180,000 people uh, with about uh, 300,000 in the county. We're halfway between Atlanta and uh, Nashville. We have the Tennessee River, which is one of the most heavily trafficked hazardous materials routes uh, in the United States, which is uh, just about four blocks from our county campus. About two blocks in another direction, we have the largest uh, transshipment rail yard in the southeastern United States, which uh, traffics millions of tons of hazardous materials every day to enter. We're, we just have a, a number of challenges that we have to deal with. We have 13,000 students, faculty, and staff here on our campus, and uh, the University of Tennessee system as a whole is about 70,000, so we make up a large portion of that. We do have 80 buildings. We do not have Alertus beacons deployed in all of those. We focus on classroom areas, and we'll talk more about that momentarily, but we do have about 3 million square feet under roof. Uh, we are just under one square mile here on our campus, right in the middle of town with everything that that entails. We have two daycare centers on campus, uh, a number of other facilities. We have, uh, we have our uh, computer research center. Uh, so we do have a lot of challenges that we have to deal with in our area. Right here. There we go. Okay, so our experience with Alertus, our experience has been largely positive. We've had a few glitches and bumps in the road. Uh, one of the issues uh, that we always look at is how responsive is the vendor. And, uh, you know, I will say that uh, I have called Alertus on a number of 
occasions and said, what's going on? And I always get an answer. I'm always able to talk to somebody. The tech guys are, are very good about talking to people. Uh, so uh, our, our overall customer experience has been positive. Right now, we have Alertus beacons deployed throughout the campus that cover about 80% of our, uh, our student seating. When we first started the installation, our standard was we wanted to put a beacon in every classroom that saw more than 100 students in a week, or excuse me, more than 40 students in a week. So uh, when we ran that number, we ended up with uh, about uh, 89, 90 classrooms. We just rounded that up to 100, and we installed beacons originally in the 100 most heavily utilized classroom spaces on campus. We also installed at about 30 uh, locations, uh, which are heavily trafficked uh, exit ways uh, across campus, some of those in academic buildings and some of them not. One of the things that Eric was talking about was using the alertus beacons in spaces where cell phones are not permitted. We have five theaters on campus. And of course, uh, when our arts departments are doing shows, they always ask people, please turn off your cell phone. Well, how do we alert those people in the middle of that show? Well, the alertus beacon along with the marquee sign gives us the ability to do that. We have currently deployed on over 700 computers campus-wide, and the biggest part of this is we deployed on every computer that runs the display, either for a classroom or for a theater. So we can take over those screens when we have to. In those spaces, uh, many times, you know, students, faculty, and staff are receiving a text message plus they are uh, seeing what's on the alertus beacon, plus they're seeing us take over their computer screen. And in some of the larger spaces, they're also seeing the marquee sign all light up, uh, you know, just literally within seconds of each other. Uh, one of the things that we are looking forward to, uh, we are talking with our Campus Council on Safety and Security. We want to make the recommendation that the uh, alertus desktop be part of the standard software package deployed on all new computers that the campus buys. And if we uh, are successful in that, then during our uh, four to five year rollout period, we will end up with desktop uh, deployed on over 4,000 machines campus wide. Uh, we make it available now in our software center. And I was looking the other day, we've had about 100, 100 to 120 uh, software downloads over the summer, which uh, yeah, everybody thinks the university goes home in the summertime. Well, that's true of the faculty and staff. You know, the faculty goes off to do their research. Uh, the students you know, go wherever they go. But for us, that's our time to fix everything that was broken in the last academic year. So over the summer, we've deployed about 100 to 150 uh, different locations uh, as far as the, the desktop alerts. We do have ours connected to a, our other mass notification systems. We actually use a total of 12 different pathways to notify people, and those include social media pathways, uh, SMS, RSS feeds, etc. Alertus is three of our pathways. In other words, Alertus is 25% of the pathways that we use. We use the beacons, we use the exit signs, and we use the desktop. We control all that through a single portal. We don't use the portal to control it. When we train, we train people how to use our standard portal with Alertus as the backup. And then we train them, here's how you use the Alertus portal to operate the standard systems if the standard systems are not available on their own portal. So it actually gives us two routes to, to uh, activate everything we have. One thing that is very important to us, as Eric pointed out, because this lives totally internally to the campus system, if we lose our internet connections, we do not lose our ability to notify. In the event of, uh, you know, one of our planning scenarios is earthquake. In the event of a New Madrid earthquake, we ex we fully expect to lose our cell phone and internet capability. What that means is we will not be able to connect to our systems via the net, nor will we be able to call our vendors to have them remotely launch an alert. As long as we have survived on campus, we will still be able to do our alerting through 
uh, through Alertus. We do use a type one time doctrine. What that means is when we are launching an emergency message, we want to go into wherever we're launching it from, type the information, push the button, and it goes down all 12 pathways at the same time. Alertus is fully configurable to that. It allows us to do that. We don't want to type the message here, go somewhere else, type the message. Uh, the other. So one of, one of our drop deads when we talk to vendors is, can you connect and can you meet our type one time doctrine? And if they cannot, then it's okay, this meeting's over. Uh, so we have no problem doing that with Alertus. It, it fully integrates into our systems. So, What's the future for Alertus here on campus? We are in the process of uh, standardizing the process for identifying where these go. We now have them in our classrooms, and uh, we are now in the maintenance and rollover cycle. I was just informed this morning that we have another building that's about to go under remod. So uh, we're looking at how do we standardize the decision-making process so that going forward, we have alert alertus beacons everywhere we need to have them. We have had the beacons now added to the um, the new construction and major remodel package. What that means for us as a university is the alertus beacon gets planned into the building the same way the annunciation devices for the fire alarm gets uh, programmed in. It's just a part of the building. It's part of the capital project. It doesn't come out of my budget, which as you might imagine, just pleases me to no end. So that makes things much easier for us. And we feel like going forward, that will improve that uh, improve our coverage. We have a building that's under major remod, completely gutted right now, that will represent 40 new Alertus installations where we had none in that building before. And that will be actually a 30% increase in our beacon fleet. So uh, as we say, we're also strongly advocating making the desktop alert standard on every university owned computer. So what we learned while we were doing this, first off, while the, the installation process is not difficult, it does take planning. Uh, one of the, uh, in the very early days of this installation, uh, I had was a relatively new employee here at the university, did not know all the ins and outs, all the different offices and people that I needed to talk to. My advice is sit down and decide what has to happen as far as getting the beacon in place on the wall? What has to come before that? That's going to include pulling cable. That's going to include providing switches if you are going to power these over PoE. If you're not powering them over PoE, then how are you going to provide that power? All those things have to be worked out in advance. That makes it for a much smoother installation. The issue that we had was because we did not work some of those out for the first uh, 25 to 30 installations, the cost on the installations was considerably over budget. So once we figured out the, uh, here's what the here's what it actually looks like to install that beacon going forward, we knew what that budget was going to be. We also discovered that adding something to the standard package for a building is, while it's difficult, it is not undoable. Many of you may be involved in uh, other government agencies. There is a certain amount of inertia that has to be overcome in order to make things happen. So we ran into those issues. Uh, and We have now, after several years, managed to overcome that. The other thing that we have uh, that has helped us overcome that is the realization, uh, and it seems like common sense, but common sense is, is not as common as one might think. Uh, it's much less expensive to install during construction or during remodel than it is to come back and retrofit the building afterward. And some of our buildings, we have one building on campus that was uh, uh, actually opened its doors in 1898. So many of our buildings are, uh, or some of our buildings are on the historic register and playing catch up in those buildings is sometimes very, very difficult to do. So uh, all things considered, we are very happy with, uh, with Alertus. We do have some other things that we're looking forward to in the future, integration with fire alarms, integration with some of our uh, public address systems, uh, integration with some of our, uh, some of our, uh, 
cable TV systems across campus. So there's a lot going on in that department for us, uh, so much so that we really don't even have everything that Alertus is going to do for us on the drawing board yet. Uh, that, that was very helpful. Uh, and I think it does a good job also of just uh, kind of showing you know, the, the impact that layering of emergency notification systems can do. Um, you know, the fact that University of Tennessee Chattanooga uses all those different uh, methods of actually getting an alert across, I think makes a very, very effective um, emergency notification system. So uh, next, uh, Vinny and I wanna kind of go through and walk through with you just an, an alert beacon activation. I've been talking about it this whole time. Um, you know, I figure while we're in our demonstration room here, it, it, you know, we can show you what it looks and sounds like. Um, and keep in mind, I'm going to be doing this uh, a custom activation through our web console, but you can uh, kind of simplify the process further by using things like panic buttons, using things like mobile apps, um, using things like your current uh, activation points just to kind of streamline that that system or, or that approach a little bit more. So uh, I'm just going to log into my Alertus console right now. Um, and uh, and then I'll share my webcam and yeah, we should be good to go. So let me log in um, and then the webcam should be coming up here shortly. Awesome, so um, like I said, I'm gonna do a custom alert here. Um, this is, uh, again, uh, not a preset. Um, I'm kind of doing this on the fly, but as you'll see, it doesn't really take a whole lot of time when I do that. So uh, I'm just gonna do a bomb threat for the sake of this activation. Um, I'm coming, I'm gonna come down here, add my alert services, which in this case are alert beacons. Um, I'm gonna toggle the uh, the tones on this. Um, I'm gonna do a, uh, a rope link as far as the visual alert type, and uh, I'm gonna set it to a uh, low activation uh, because Vinny and I are in a very small room right now, uh, and um, we need to hear people talk better. So <laughs> um, as far as the, the groups go, I'm just gonna do all, but again, this is where you can select by building or um, you can select by unit if you'd like. So when I hit continue here, this is a really important section. Um, it just is essentially a confirmation of what's going to happen when you send out this message. So, um, you know, we can avoid things like uh, accidental activations. We can uh, make sure that this scenario that we're gonna send out is exactly what we want. So um, going down here, I'm just gonna review that again, uh, make sure the tones are right, yep, and then we'll hit send on this. Uh, it'll take about 15, 20 seconds, but you should see it on the webcam there uh, that the two alert beacons uh, should start activating. All right, so let that run for a little bit uh, and then we can set it off. And keep in mind, this is the low setting. All right, so I'm gonna cancel this alert. Uh, it's gonna, again, take about 15, 20 seconds to cancel. All right, um, so yeah, as you saw, took about 15, 20 seconds to activate, took about 15, 20 seconds to cancel as well. Um, and that was the low setting. Uh, that can go up two more, uh, two more levels if you want uh, to, to get that 106 decibel uh, maximum notification there. So uh, as far as kind of what we wanted to discuss with you today, um, that's all I had. Um, I understand there may have been a few questions uh, along the way. So um, Vinny, if you uh, want to read those questions, I'd be happy to, uh, to try and answer some of them. Sure, no problem. Thank you, Eric and Tim. Uh, we're now beginning the Q&A session of our presentation. Um, like Eric said, if you have a question, just please submit it through the chat or question box. Um, please note if we do not get to your question during this session, uh, we will reach out to you to answer your question directly. Uh, this webinar is also being recorded and will be shared with you after today's presentation. All right, now our first question. Uh, can the alert beacon be set up without the sounders activated? Uh, yeah, yeah, it can. Uh, so you saw during that custom activation, uh, I did toggle the sound settings. One of those sound settings is silent. So if you wanted to send out a message uh, with no sound, you could do that. Um, also, if you knew going going into you know your Alertus project that you know this specific alert beacon shouldn't have any noise, maybe it's in a, a dispatch center, maybe it's in a sensitive area, uh, we can actually uh, do some work on the, the actual firmware side here uh, to make sure that alert beacon is completely silent. Uh, next question, uh, if the alert beacon is using Wi-Fi, what is the power source? Uh, that's also a good question. So uh, this is gonna take uh, any AC, DC power. Typically, um, it's connected into uh, just a standard power outlet um, using one of our one of our AC adapters. Um, so that's typically how I see uh, Wi-Fi alert beacons powered. Um, there are some other ways, but I, I would say the, the, power, um, the power brick is the most common. 
Our next question, how does the alert beacon interface with the voice fire alarm system? Uh, that's a good question. So uh, as far as the voice goes, um, the alert beacon will provide information to that text-to-speech module, which is then going to be interfaced in with uh, your your voice system on your fire alarm using a line and audio input. So um, it's kind of the, the, the brain that's going to send the information to the text-to-speech, which is then going to make the speech and broadcast it out. Uh, can the alert beacon be hooked up to a TTS speaker? Yep, uh, it can. Uh, again, that's where that RS-232 port comes in. Uh, so same thing I was just talking about. You know, if you wanted to get that voice message, um, the alert beacon at the moment uh, would be the method that you'd go uh, to, to broadcast that. Uh, how does the alert beacon work with panic buttons? Uh, that's, that's a good question as well. So uh, the panic buttons uh, essentially tie into the, the contact closure on the alert beacon. So each alert beacon can have uh, have two panic buttons. So if you have uh, you know four panic buttons, you're going to need two alert beacons essentially. Okay, thanks, sir. Um, we do have a request to demonstrate a one button activation. Do you think we can do that really quick? Uh, yeah, we can. Um, so this is going to be uh, kind of a full activation. Um, I just showed you uh, you know just a general alert beacon one. This is going to be the full activation. So I'm actually going to utilize one of those panic buttons. So this is my emergency button, uh, this uh, this yellow button right here. It's just going to be a general panic button press alarm, uh, but you can see how this all opens down. So I press it, it's going to send a message to the alert beacon, send it back to the server, and then it should activate everything pretty quickly. Okay, oh, there we go. Device name, North Lobby initiated a panic button activation at 12.36 and 34 seconds. Device is located at security desk. Device name, North Lobby initiated a panic button activation at 12.36 and 34 seconds. Device is located at security desk. Alright, um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of the full system activation. Um, uh, you saw the the tech, you, you heard the text to speech. You saw the computers go. Um, there was a, a Cisco VoIP phone in that as well. Um, I believe that that was from our last webinar. Um, but that did go off um, as well as uh, the message was sent to the mobile app and the LED marquee um, activated. Thank you. Uh, we have now concluded the Q and A session of our presentation. Uh, again, if we did not get to your question, we will directly reach out to you with an answer. If you have any questions or need additional information, please feel free to reach out to uh, marketing at alertus.com and we'll be happy to assist you. If you're looking for more information on Alertus and our solution, you can visit our website at alertus.com. And if you are interested in upcoming webinars, please visit alertus.com slash webinars to see the full schedule. We thank you for joining today's webinar and we look forward to meeting you again soon.